house. I was driving. Okay. We are going to open the meeting at six o'clock. No. Hi. Oh. Sounds like Bob. Rainy, are we seeing you? Yeah, I'm watching the Blanford Select Committee. They're going to interview jobs for a road superintendent. It's going to be there. Secretary, and Hensdale's old secretary, her husband, who is buddies with Seneca. Hey, can you hear us? I'll, I'll fill you in later. Can you uh, mute your... Yeah, whatever you want. Chicken and toast and gravy would be good. Be easy. All right. He's, he's muted. I, yeah. Oh, all you have to do, okay. Yeah, I got it over here. I'm, I'm the host. Yes, I just want to see that. All you would have to do is go up from here. You're not going to see it because... It won't come up because... Yeah. And then you try to get your husband a mute button at home. So you can just click that. Now let me know how that works. <laughs> All right. That's right next to the listen to me button. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you both seem to be uh, malfunctioning. Okay. So, um, first up, we've got some meeting minutes uh, for the third. What is that beautiful noise? Time to go over. Is that TJ? Uh, for the uh, meeting minutes of the third, we're going to table that for next. Uh, meeting. Is there a second? So uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I would make a motion to approve the meeting minutes, uh, the regular meeting minutes, as well as the executive session meeting minutes of May 10th as written. Sure, Any sure. discussion? Are you guys need time with those? Nope. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there audience participation? Yeah. Oh, joy. Oh, I, I, what? <laughs> what do you got? Uh, I, I was, uh, <laughs> just hit the button on the side of your device. <laughs> Uh, oh, TJ. All right. Yeah. I wish. Anyhow, uh, I was uh, thinking about, you know, uh, for Memorial Day, not this Memorial Day, but coming in the future. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, citizens never uh, saw the process for retiring five. Okay. And, uh, what it is is uh, they burn the flags, but it's a ceremony that's done. And when I was involved with the scouts, we used to do it with the uh, Marine Corps Reserves, but I've been out of scouts now for 30 years. So yeah. I don't even know if they still do it or not. That'd be but interesting to see. Yeah, it, well, I think it, you know, uh, people should be aware. Yeah. And uh, I don't know now, Maybe uh, Eric can help me here. Do they do it on Veterans Day, Patriots Day, Flag Day? When do they normally do it? I forget. <laughs> I have found in the many region posts that I have been members of that it varies from town to town. Okay. There are, it, it is often dependent upon the body that is doing the flag disposal. Okay. If the, if the VFW or the elite Legion does it, they'll pick a day, usually a holiday, to do that. Um, mm -hmm. If it's been, um, if it's been the Marine Corps, uh, Marine Corps Reserve, they I've seen do it on uh, the anniversary of the Corps. Just yeah, to, uh, it's people pick. So different should we check with the Legion, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because I I was talking with uh, Lloyd Barton about it, and mm -hmm. we were thinking that. Like as part of the Memorial Day uh, service, it would be apropos because we'll be burning the flags that were taken from the cemetery, and anyone who has 
foreign flags or anything, you know, instead of bringing them to the dump, bring them to the ceremony, and we can do the red, white, and blue thing and all that. So it's just a suggestion. Yeah, that's a good idea. TJ. I don't know if Doug Emo has the connections to put this together or not. That's probably why he's calling me. But I don't want to talk to him right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that him? <laughs> Nice. Well, okay. And now you just announced to Zoom World. The channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost the idea of the ceremony, right? To me, the flag burning ceremony should be something that's done in the evening and at dusk so that you're playing catch with it. Yeah. Right. But it's it's just sometimes it's setting you can do it for the day if you're doing it for instruct you for the but the really cool ones are done at sunset. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I just thought I'd talk that out here to think about. Um, yes, I like it. So we'll, well, that would be you said for the following year, correct? Pardon? For the not for this year, you said? For the no, following. for yeah, yeah. It, you have to prepare for it. Yeah, have it sounds like you would. Bugler and, you know, okay. Take some I think that's a really good idea. I'd be interested to see that. Thank you, TJ. Um, all right, we've got some appointments on here um we've got uh dave Motter for fire chief forest warden warden and emergency management Je uh, Jen jennifer jarred for emergency management tammy we just police chief and then emergency management thank you sumner robbins for zoning uh gordon avery for water super doug evil especially of grades and Dougie Mull for Watson Park groundskeeper. Was that that's an appointed position, groundskeeper? Do we? I guess so. Yeah, we fired, right? Yeah. I made a motion with yeah. action items or approved action items A through. Come on, J. Okay. There's a second for discussion. Eric would. Oops. Hi. Hi. Go <laughs> We you appointed uh, Sonia Hutchins last time as the alternate to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I think Sumner is just a straight Zoning Board of Appeals appointment. That's not what they told me. It's two alternates. I think so. I called, I called Don Brainerd and myself, and he said that uh, Sumner is hanging on to um, alternates. Because well, we've got, I don't question how many they have. Well, we've got Sonia and Sumner as alternates, and then Jim and Don as regulars. Okay. So we need to make one or the other of them. We'll do the appointment as is for now, and then we can go okay. back and only make that correction. Do you want to just hold off on that one? Uh, we'll no, clarify. I'd rather do that one as alternate. Okay. Water yeah. superintendent. Is that actually our appointment, or is that what I was starting to say was person. in the past we've done just employees. Yeah, uh, that are um I don't, know, I don't know maybe you're right about groundskeeper we're trying to build this so whatever yeah. you guys want me to do yeah we'll do because we do like um i guess we do superintendents mostly not somebody like groundskeeper right yeah but he's no i think i remember appointing him and and then i remember because we would appoint ann savory as assistant so yeah, we have a point and doesn't want to do the assistant okay but so yeah, yeah we do, we do a point you know, assistant what she was in the Ground past keeper. assistant groundskeeper she doesn't want it anymore you guys so this is all coming as together. trustees of watson park so that's part of your job yeah um, um this is all starting to come together because it was a bit of a mess mm -hmm. um so we'll just make adjustments as we go we're trying to mm -hmm. just get a foundation right now and start from there and we'll make okay. changes as we go along okay so, I agree. Approve it, and then we'll yeah, and then we can go back and we'll, we'll correct it. Speaking of Watson Park Foundations and Ralph the Walls, yeah, <laughs> I know. Any date on our stone wall getting fixed? You know. So if you want me to me? see, me, you. No, I have no idea. Thought you might have an inside track on it though. That would be wonderful. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Look at that. Bam, look at all, we can go right to the back side already. Yeah, we already got the page flipper. Holy cow. Okay, do we have, um, do we have Dave here? 
I can't see that far. I think you're supposed to be here until quarter right. after. You're talking about the candidate? Yeah. Yeah, he's out front. I told oh. him to come for 6.15. Okay, do you want us to do um, the other? Contract between the town and OPM? So the That's still um, on hold. Okay, so we're gonna, so motion to table. Uh, well, we just get Dave in here and so let's just table this. So we're going to table the contract between town and um, City Point Partners for next week. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then we've got the warrant for annual town meeting. Do we need to approve that tonight or we're just looking at it? Well, we still have time. If you want to just look at it, you can approve it tonight. Um, the posting date is June 14. Oh, you um, in case yeah. there's any uh, last minute changes. But it's got to be printed in the town report, and I'd like to send it to press this week so we'll have it in time for the city town meeting and it can go online as well. Is there anything that's still pending? No, but just so you're aware, that article regarding the, um, the building inspector wanted to include a provision in there of cars tax lien no the other one the first one we went through tax uh, oh yeah liens on mm -hmm. fees or mm -hmm. infractions and it turns out council came back and uh, re-reviewed it and said we couldn't do it okay. um so, so I just, we took it out completely uh the only thing i'm seeing on the back uh greetings is spelt wrong Gre greetings you're like the greetings <laughs> Yeah, I can, you know, like I said, we can put this on your next. The town clerk is allowed to make non substantial changes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing has changed since the last time besides that, the removal of that one? Yeah, no, nothing's changed. Nothing's been added or taken out. I mean, just the minor edits, like, for example, uh, Article 5. Remember the five minute conversation we had about yeah. if we should reflect pilot payment? We took that out. Um, we're we're looking good. Okay. Do you think you guys want to approve it tonight? I don't see a reason why not. Okay. Um, I'd make a motion to uh, approve the annual town meeting warrant as is. Second. Any discussion? Hold on. With the updated greetings in the back that you pointed out. Oh yeah. yes. But I have to make yes. sure I print it now though before you um, leave. Do you want me to put? Oh yeah, I can't sign. Yeah. Yeah, Debbie Clean on the side. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we are uh there. we're ready. Right. So you have um the rate the questions in front of you. At this point it's one candidate. It's your template. You can ask those or any other questions you might want to ask that that's not there. Okay. So it's just a tool. So Okay. Can I go get them? Yeah, right thank you. Oh, okay. Hello. Well, I mean, that's the first time the police ever ever, ever escorted you to a job. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky oh, you. Yes, huh? <laughs> Welcome. At least I wasn't in cost. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Yes, same here. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Hey, David. Um, gorgeous. All right. So welcome. Um, so I know you've been through the first start of the, part of the process. Yes. Um, all, you made it through all those interviews. Yes. Um, so this is your last one. Uh, we have some questions. I think we have about a bazillion. No, we have eleven, which is really ten. But we have we have eleven, um, and so what we'll do, uh, what we typically do, is we sort of go around and each one of us will ask a question. You can, if you, uh, some of them are two parts, so if you need us to repeat, yes. just please feel free to ask. Yes. Um, so I'm going to start. Um, the first one is just tell me about yourself, uh, your any long term career goals, and why you're interested in this job. Um, I started off as a young kid. Like, we joined the military. I joined the military we had in 79. <clears throat> I got out in 86. Got back in 91. Did a total of 30 years of active duty in National Guard. Retired as an E-8. Uh, my wife and I did a life change. Uh, we worked for, uh, I worked for waste management for about 10 years. Worked for a um, lumber company for about 10 years. 
and decided it was time for a move. So we moved back down here, of course, with her kids. Um, <clears throat> I worked with uh, being stressed for like eight months. That was uh, very stressful. <laughs> if, if anybody's ever worked there. For who? Unit stress. Unit stress? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Petruca over in Pittsfield. They're a precast concrete company. Pre stressed concrete. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and then I had an opportunity to, to work for a highway department and uh, I got hired in Hinsdale, worked with Rain for uh, a few years. Um, very educational, very wise person he is. Um, he moved on. I moved on to another town. I worked for the town of Washington for a town about roughly 18 months. Um, I enjoy doing something different every day. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy working with the people, working with the town, talking to the community. And uh, it's pretty interesting what you do find about the town and what the people in the town. It's very, very interesting. So um, why do I want to work here? I like the way the town is going. Um, I've heard stories. I heard good stuff, bad stuff, like everybody else has about different towns. Um, it's going in the right direction. And I would like to be part of that direction. Great. Possible. Excellent. I agree with you. It's going in a great direction. Yeah. Um, Eric, you're next. I was going to ask you, um, so if you were working on highway at Hinsdale, what made you want to leave there? Um, different ideas on bosses. It was time, just time to leave. Good. You got a real I'm question. Good. That was a real question. No, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, a question on the script. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> in this job, you'll be overseeing on behalf of the select board in front of you today, day-to-day um, -to -day activities of the highway department. Tell us what you would prioritize as short and long-term goals uh, that you think will meet the needs of the department. And how do you anticipate working with town personnel and the select board to achieve those goals? Can we start with the first one? Yep. So uh, what do you think are the short and long-term goals for you if you were the highway supervisor? Well, as you know now, things have changed. Mm -hmm. We are a little short in staff. Um, that That's going to change most of the short-term and long-term mm -hmm. until we are able to fill up those people in. Mm -hmm. Um, as for short, short term, just the basic road maintenance, dirt roads, get them back up where they should be. Mm -hmm. um, every day, uh, maintenance on the vehicles. Um, yeah, vehicles, um, the equipment, and so on and so forth. That's pretty much, you know, not every day you do it, but at least the majority of the day, and, and you do something different every day. But you know, getting the roads up to where they belong is going to be a long process. And then, how do you anticipate working with the town personnel and select board to achieve those goals? Well, <clears throat> I would I would communicate with the town administrator on things that are happening in the town, things that are happening with me with the roads. I would also get with him on the, uh, the possibility of grants that come through, see if we can work together and maybe come up with a better plan. And then I would, you know, communicate with the select board and find out what, what their needs are for the, uh, for the town and for me. Awesome. Um, you're number three. Oh. To add to what Eric had in his mental bond, what about the, the other, the two boys that work for you? For your equation? The two boys? <laughs> <laughs> they're fantastic. Aren't they? Yes, they are. They're, uh, they're very interesting to work with. Yep. They have majority, they have a lot, they have a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. But it needs to be focused. <clears throat> they like to 
you know, go here, there, and everywhere with it. Um, I get along with them great. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I expect, respect them, they respect me. Um, we all work together on ideas and how we can accomplish the mission quicker, safer, and more efficient. All right, so how about, if you had any experience with preparing or in managing a budget and working within the constraints of a budget? That I have not, <clears throat> but Rainey has shown me some stuff on the budget. You've got an experience with <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, I, may, I may have an experience coming, but for this experience is that you got to have, you have to be networking. And if you don't network, you're going to have the hardest problem there is out there. You know, if I need to work on the budget, I can, I can talk to Josh, I can talk to you guys, the finance, you know, other people out there that's available to teach you, to learn. You know, I mean, everybody doesn't know everything all at one time. It, it's a learning experience. How did you, um, uh, just drawn back farther in your experience uh, with the uh, National Guard and the Army, did you do anything for TO and E in doing uh, managing fuels and equipment and any of that kind of budgeting? No, I was I was a tanker 30 for 26 years. I worked on the M1, M1 A1 tank. <clears throat> um, we did the basic maintenance. Every day, mm -hmm. um, the forty-five minute engine change, right? Uh, maybe forty-five. It, it's gotten better. It has gotten better. Um, when I went to Iraq in two thousand and six, um, we had an incident over there, and uh, I was informed that I was going to take over our supply area, and I was going to do the inventory for the whole division <clears throat> that was there. Um, it's nothing to do with a budget, but it's the idea of finding everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a task in itself. You know, you're on a, a five, five area, five mile square area, and you have you know, 15,000 soldiers in there, and you had to find a radio or this or that, everything else. Um, we set up a plan, <clears throat> we did it, we found probably about 90% of it, which was good. And our commander was happy. Absolutely. Um, so this is similar. Do you have uh, experience with um, equipment operation, maintenance, and replacement of such equipment? Replacing of equipment, as in buying new equipment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no. But as I said before, there's people out there that was it's willing to help you look mm -hmm. look for it and find it. Um, as maintenance, I did maintenance in the military. I did a lot of maintenance when I was in uh, Hinsdale in, in, in the town of Washington. Um, my former supervisor, Rainey there, he kind of like took me under his wing to teach and show and all that stuff. Um, one of the trucks I worked on had a bad rear end in it. And he told me, you know, we're gonna get a new one. And you're gonna take this all apart. This is how you're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And while it's out, you're gonna clean it. And while we're waiting for the parts to get in here, you're gonna change all the brake cams on it, cans, the whole nine yards of everything. And I says, okay. And then, you know, then we get the hydraulic press in, we started doing our own, our own lines and so on and so forth, electrical. Uh, it's it's amazing what he knows. Yeah. You know, and I keep telling him, I wish you stayed stay five more years. <laughs> I'm sure he'll let you pick his brain too if you need to. Yes, I, I believe he would. Not for the first week or two though. Yeah, you may need a break. Um, a resident calls you to complain about one of your employees um, using a, a town truck improperly. They've got video of it. Um, they threaten to go to the media tomorrow if you don't do something about it. What are you going to do? Well, I would make an appointment, go visit the young person, whoever who happens to be, and explain, ask him, tell him about his concerns. And I was asking him that if he would share the video with the town administrator and with the select board and give us a few days to research it and find out what the issues were and we would get back with them. 
I would also, after that part with him, I would go back and talk to the young gentleman or person, I should say, and explain to him why he did and that he's not supposed to do it. You're up with number six, Tom. Yep. How would you identify and handle personnel problems? Uh, <clears throat> tell us about an experience in which you concluded a solution to solve a problem and how you went about reaching that. <laughs> Uh, I, I've only had a few in, in my in my lifetime, and which I, I guess I'm pretty lucky, you know. Um, the most recent one was a few years ago in the crew we were working with. <clears throat> and we had three gentlemen there, and uh, two a couple of kids that were a little bit younger, but not too young. But they should have known better. But and the other gentleman, we got along. And we chit chat. He goes, "Yeah, it's just these people over there always picking on me, this, that, everything else." And I says, "Well, why is it?" He goes, "I don't know what the problem is." I says, "All right, well." And I sat back and I just watched. And you sit back and you look at things and you evaluate how it goes and you know find out is it true or what you know. And it was true. They were they were bothering him quite often, saying you know weird things and. So I, I approached two people and uh, I explained to them, I says, hey, I says, you really need to take slack, slack off on him a little bit and just let him go, you know, and see how he feels about it. And uh, it was probably maybe a month later, you know, he started realizing that, wow, so well, they're not picking on me anymore, you know? And uh, and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's easy to handle. Um, just talk to the people, you know, if you get, if it gets more in depth, you know, then you, just, you start breaking out the paper and you start writing up people, you know, which you don't need to, but if it comes to that part, you have to. So, Two part question. How are you prepared to handle chapter 90 projects under the new guidelines? And then the second part is share with us how you have improved your knowledge over the past year. Uh, First part, chapter 90. Um, if you haven't known yet, it is changing. Not the paperwork, but the way it is submitted. It's gonna be submitted online. Um, it, it, it's a pretty easy process. You know, you still have your three forms. Um, your last form you have there is your uh, conservation, which has to be signed. And then you just download it into your packet again and you, and you forward it to them. Um, you got mass, mass DOT and you also have a, a program called um, Map It. Mm -hmm. um, what it does is that it brings up, you bring up where you are and you find out, like for instance, it's easy. North Blanford Road, okay? You want to do a project on North Blanford from, let's say, the intersection 23 all the way down to Millard, okay? And all you got to do is you get your mouse, you highlight it, and you, you click on, you highlight it up, you know, you do a little little wider so you can get the culverts and the um, aprons of your roads. And uh, you download it, and you send it off with all that rest of the paperwork. It's... Mm -hmm. They say it's going to be easier. <laughs> they say. Yeah. You know, anything with a computer is not going to make it easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're realizing that with MCAS. Okay. And as for... So the second part is, um, it, how have you improved your knowledge within the past year to be an effective highway super? Well, through the other two towns, we were able to have um, classes to go to. Mm -hmm. you know, the UMass, uh, Bay State, and all of that stuff. Well, now since we're not able to do that because of the COVID, um, they still do the classes, but it's always done in-house, you know, on, on Zoom and all that stuff. Well, a lot of us are not able to make these, these classes. So what they've been doing is they've been taping them. 
So you can refer yourself, say you want to do culverts, drainage. You find it that, there, you click on it, and you watch it. Um, there's plenty of classes out there to watch and to understand. And, and if you do have questions, you know, you're always able to call the, the gentleman who puts the class on out in New Mass there and, and ask them, you know, what about this and what about that? Um, that's what's nice about it. Okay, so if selected for the position, about 90 days later, we have a goal meeting session where you tell us whether or not you've met your goals. What would be your goals that you would want to meet in 90 days? I want to meet your goals. Okay. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> as, you're, as you're seeing things around the town, what would you want to accomplish if you're sitting in Rainey's chair in the next 90 days? Next 90 days. Hire two new people, if possible. At least one for that. Um, that's one. Yeah. Yep. That's 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 probably one of the major ones right there. Is for him. Right. Uh, yeah. to keep up the, uh, the 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 work we've been doing on the dirt roads. Uh, Rain was telling me when he first started, he he put in a lot of money into uh, one road itself, and. Uh, it's been neglected for, for years and years, and it's time to get it back up. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to in, in inspect and, and check out all the culverts and catch basins, um, see what other um, grants are out there for the future. I mean, not 90 days is, you know, not, not a very long time. <laughs> it's an eye blinker. <laughs> yes, it is. It really is, you know. It's like, you know, I've been here almost a year, and somebody thinks I've been here for two or three. <laughs> Josh. So let's say in 90 days, you're here in your review with the select board. Turns out that your objectives weren't met. Neither party is happy. What do you think went wrong? And how would you make sure that that doesn't happen in your 90 day um, review period? Well, I would come to the select board and town administrator says, hey, give me some guidance. What do you want me to actually do? I mean, I can do stuff on my own, but if, if you don't have that guidance sometimes, you know, I may want to go over here, but you may want me to go over, over this way a little farther. And I expect to be here past 90 days. You had number eight. You gonna ask that one? Or that no? was my number eight. That was your I number eight. You changed number eight. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> that went all McFly on you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Nobody's surprised. <laughs> <laughs> By the seat of his pants. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Tom. What's your strongest personal asset? And share with us what's been your biggest professional accomplishment. The big I'm. Easy, easily accessible. If you, if you have an issue or want to talk about some road or some pothole, I'm there no matter what. Um, I'm easy to get along with. I'm always looking for new things to do or try. Um, if I don't know something, always ask. My biggest accomplishment in my professional career, getting promoted to E8 in Iraq. All right. Uh, when we call your previous employers, what is the best thing they'll say about you? And then the second part to that would be, are there any concerns that we should know about at this time? Uh, second, second part, there's no concerns. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if you recall my uh, employer, he would say he's always on time. He comes in early. He's always eager to work. He likes to learn. He likes to educate. He likes to train other people. And that's one of the common, 
compliments I got before I left. <clears throat> when I left the town of Washington, we had a young gentleman there. He was 20, he just turned 21 years old and Randy and I met him when he was 19. And he asked us, what do I need to become a highway person? Now he's is 19 years old. You don't see any kid that old yeah. do that. And we explained to him, this is what you need. You need a driver license, hoisting, this, this, and that. Okay. 21 years old. He's got his class A. He's got his hoisting and hydraulics license. He doesn't have his 4G yet. Um, he had problems driving the truck. So me and him went out for a couple of days on and off. Um, taught him how to do this and do it a little bit better. Uh, getting into equipment, like a loader of the backhoe. I, I would watch him for 15, 20 minutes, give him some key ideas on how to, you know, bring the bucket in and bring the bucket out, you know, at the same time and without movements. And uh, he went in there and told Thomas, says, you know, says, he's a good teacher. Yeah. You know, and that, that makes you feel good at the end of the day. Absolutely. You know? Our last one is just sort of if you have any questions for us or if there's anything you want to share with us that we didn't uh, talk it's about. It's sort of like that or actually, do you have any questions? Exactly, <laughs> exactly like that. She just made it flowery. That's okay. I did make it flowery. Right? Sounds better when I say it. Okay. <laughs> what are your expectations of me? That's a good question. Um, so I think one of the things that I've been happy with the past few years, um, having Rainy with us, um, is not having as much uh, come to us. There's been, it, it's just the understanding that things are, things are being managed and they're being managed well. So, you know, we worked a little bit to, to build that trust, mm -hmm. um, but then to be able to know that Rainy's taking care of things and that he's doing it um, efficiently, um, you know, so I would say to make sure that when you're seeking um, buying new equipment or um, looking at contracts that we know that you have, um, you know, your budget in mind, mm -hmm. town's best interest, um, you're thinking long term, maybe if you're going to plan the project, you're, you know, using doing combining a couple right. so that you're saving money. That was something that I always appreciated. Um, uh, I would expect that, you know, we you do you are in a position where you end up with people calling, mm -hmm. complaining, you're going to get complaints. Um, and there's a lot of misunderstanding. And so I think managing that in a professional right. way, um, being able to appease people and make sure that they're happy and that they know that the work is getting done, you know, because <laughs> yep. there's a lot of what's yes. getting done and what am I paying my tax dollars for? Um, yeah, so just that knowledge that, um, that that things are getting done and that they're being taken mm -hmm. care of without sort of us because because you're the professional right you know we're we, we don't know or at least i don't know much about highway tom knows a heck of a lot more than i do um and so does eric sorry eric <laughs> not as much as tom <laughs> if we're being fair um because yeah so that you you know you're the professional the expert that we that we seek you know advice from mm -hmm. I, I think my expectations are uh money Okay, so we're, we give a significant portion of this town's budget to the highway department to entrust them mm -hmm. to do that work. There's a part of it where uh, I think, you know, we had an issue earlier this year with a, a road that continues to wash out. So we continue to dump thousands mm -hmm. upon thousands, mm -hmm. about, right? And, you know, fool me once, that's great. Fool me twice, eh, fool me three times. We need a better solution. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> I think that's incumbent upon who's ever sitting in that highway department chair. To, we, we, we need some solutions because we don't want to feed money into rock and ass. Well, I don't, I don't blame it. Right. If, if there's something that's not right, we need a solution. That's right. And we're okay with, I'm personally okay with a solution that costs a little more if I'm only going to pay for it one, one time. Right? I, 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 I'm only going to pay for it once every 15 years, something right. like that. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's, I think that stewardship of, of funds is mm -hmm. important. Um, and I think communication of what we're doing on your roads, right? I think people really appreciate that. Even if it's, uh, if you're going to spend five days working on a piece of road, you know, right. people want to know what you're doing, right? Yep. What can you do to 
think differently as a supervisor about that. It's like when the when the crew's setting up, you just drop a note off at, at the house that are long. Hey, we're out here. Yeah. We're going to be out here for a week working. So just so you know, folks, something that that makes people feel more informed than oh, I saw the highway guys. Out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we've probably talked about it for six years. We we really need to improve our drainage. Somehow, <laughs> you're not the only town. So, you know, it's 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 one of the hardest things that is one of the most neglected ones out there. You know, like the town of Hinsdale, town of Washington, it's the same thing. You know, you could start doing it this year and and take you three, four years, maybe five years to get get them all done, and then you back right at it again. And it's 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 yeah, not going. Circle. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's. But I, I, I tell you, what, I do agree with you 100. percent I hate doing the job three times. I want to do it once and get it done with, and do it right. And I don't want to go back and have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. But uh, you know, one of the, the best tools you've got up there is that mini excavator, because you can send a guy out with that in a 550 mm -hmm. and clean waterways out so easy and so well. You can. It, 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 I mean, you're absolutely right. But it, it's going to take him to get out there with the mini to do that and, and load the 550. And he'll be there for a half hour to an hour. And he's got to leave. And then, then you got you have to locate a place to dump it. Yeah. But yeah. we can. We can. You know? Yeah. <laughs> we got leaves and stuff. It's okay. Yeah, well, as long as they don't go. Uh, but if, if we. Check around, there's people close by where we'd be doing these projects that would take some fill. But one of the problems with that is if you're cleaning a waterway, it's got salt in it. Mm -hmm. And that they're declaring that is a hazardous material. Yeah. What if you add pepper? Well, it'd be worse, <laughs> but it, it stops a lot of what we used to do yes and, uh, years ago you just you know some guy down the street needed you know all, all the material you wanted loaded up and off you went <laughs> this is the 21st century and people don't want all that stuff you know that's all yeah afraid of that. well yeah i'm a salt <laughs> <buddy too. laughs> yeah, i mean I, i've talked to the guys at work you now i know there's a couple people that would not mind having it you know um, but it's ongoing process for years and years and years you know then you got to figure out well okay says so we're going to spend a week doing this but we got man manage more time over here doing these roads here and you know it's it's may almost june you know and we still got dirt roads to do and then we got more passion to do you know <laughs> like i said before you know you only got three people. Yeah. It's going to be really hard to accomplish what you guys really want and what I want. Well, I think that myself, I'll talk to you about it and to the other two on the board. We've got to get off our butts and get two more people in there. Um, we've worked without one for a long time now and the deficit shows mm. and uh, now we need two yeah so yeah. We, we've got to get with it we got to do it do you have any expectations that you personally wanted to um let me know about he knows pretty much he knows about. okay he wants his ditches clean Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's the problem with a lot of roads. That's why we're yeah, it is. spending money putting material on. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, you, all, all the dirt roads are that way. Yeah. You know, and if you, when you go down, you know, go down um, South Street, mm -hmm. you know, it looks good. But then all of a sudden you get leaves that are, you know, four feet thick. Yeah. You know. What do you do? We don't have a vac system. We can't go on a vacuum and mull it up. That, that takes time too, time and money. You know, just, sometimes it's, it's a losing war. <laughs> yeah. But there's battles you can win, though. That's for sure. 
We're all good? Yes. I think, yeah. That's the end of our questions. So you're all set, unless there's anything else you want to share with us? No. I'm Thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Nice to see you. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, David. You're welcome. We'll be in touch. Right. Do you guys have Yep. Take care. Okay. Did we make it through the agenda? We just had all the new business. Well, uh, are we going to take care of this position now? Yep, executive session. In a, uh, is that an executive session? Yep. Session? Mm -hmm. Sure is. Okay. I don't know if you want to bother with this. I printed them because they're ready, but it, it's long, so you might want to. Okay. You can do it tonight if you have time, or we'll wait till next okay. week. Okay. Okay, so let's go unfitted, unfinished. Do we have any COVID 19 stuff? March 29th. Not the moment, but yeah, we're looking at the 29th as the target date to reopen, although 29th is a Saturday. It's Memorial Day weekend, so maybe June 1st. What? Well, Saturday is the 29th. Yes. Monday we're closed. Yes, Tuesday we're closed. No, Tuesday Monday we're closed. Sorry. Tuesday's June 1st, so we could have a target date opening town hall for June 1st. Or can't we open on the 28th so people can use the damn bathrooms when they come to the parade? <laughs> well, it's the parade is on the 31st. Yeah, the parade's on, on, the mon on the Monday. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, we can do that too. Let me just Get up. What would we do without Eric? <laughs> and, and it's kind of is in conjunction with him, Governor Baker, saying take yeah. your mask off. So. Yeah. No big deal. But yeah, Can some light as, at the end of the tunnel. Update? What? That we're going to open on what day? We'll shoot to open for the 28th. Yeah. 28th? Um, yeah, which would be the Friday that week. And that way, Monday, town hall would be available to residents to use the necessary. facilities. <laughs> on Friday? <laughs> no. But they can use the bathrooms on Friday, but they could. Most importantly, use the bathroom. Yeah, just keep Memorial it on the 28th. On Memorial Day. Keep it all consistent. That's the Friday. The 28th? Yeah. Yes. I mean, the 29th. 29th. The 29th. The 29th. Saturday. Saturday. Is, okay. that, is that the degree is the 29th? Yeah. That's what the That's government what the That's 100% uh, capacity for like events like uh, weddings. So, motion for the town hall to resume normal operations Saturday, May 29th. It would be with, uh, it's, is that no mass? We don't have to put any, I think right. we'll still so have to put some measures up. Like There the, will be, yeah. yeah. There will be some um, restrictions. Uh, Jen and I plan to meet on Wednesday to go over those. Yeah. And actually so next week, some, Monday, she'll be coming back with, with something much more. With guidance appropriately posted. Yeah, with guidance <laughs> from Board of Health. Yeah. yeah. I'll second that. Any discussion? Jen does plan on coming on Monday. Okay. okay. So that she can we can go over what those guidelines will be. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All in favor? Hurrah. Hurrah. Aye. All those in favor of freedom. So um I think we should probably continue to zoom our meetings. I think if people want to come, it's a nice easy option for them, if that's okay with you, you know, everyone else. Um, and then they're available online. It's just something extra to offer. But people will be able to come in if they want to in person. I'm sure there will get a flow of traffic. Um, I'm thinking if this room fills up with 20 people, it may not be manageable for you. So. When does this room fill up with 20 people? Look, Bob's going to bring his posse back. TJ's going to bring his folks in. <laughs> Dick will start returning to meetings. I mean, it can get crowded fast in here. I think we'll be okay. okay. Listen, Same. if I can zoom a class from a 20, we'll be Same. okay. Don't don't overestimate the power of freedom when people have a voice. I wish more people would come and share their voice with us. <laughs> I really do. Um, do we have a Shepherd Farm update? No, Shepherd Farm update. We're still, PNBPC is still drafting that grant application. So Look, that'll be submitted soon. We have an update. I'm going to make a motion to sell it. 
No, we're waiting in the feasibility we're still waiting. study. <laughs> no motion. I've had so many updates on Shepherd's Farm that never come through. I don't think the motion Well, because the last, the, the last <laughs> they won't have to have any motions about it anymore. We're waiting on the feasibility. <laughs> we're know. waiting the grant. It's just sitting on here as a So we don't forget we about it. Keep on. There isn't going to be anything to sell because it's going to fall out. It'll just be dirt. Listen, we got to be patient. It's in the works. Feasibility study. Feasibility I study. I know. But we're, we're yeah. making we're making progress. We got a grant coming. It was a note to myself. Separate the E from not. Not E. Oh, not E. Because I keep forgetting. Is it, got e? it. is it A? Is it E? Is it A? Nope. Not E. It's like saying <laughs> not E. It's not E. It's not E. It's not E. It's not E. It gets me there. Is there other unfinished business? Yeah, in your packet, this was kind of a late file item here. Um, the gas and diesel bid. And I just got the numbers today, and I, I put this little graph here just so you can give you a visual of what to expect. But uh, Burke, Dennis Burke, came as the preferred bid. Um, FY22 gas fixed lock price at $2.92 a gallon. And then uh, FY22 diesel, $2.75 a gallon. And I showed how it compares to That's the 30, current fiscal year. So it's more. going up. Um, the other um companies here that bid it was sandy energy llc and roberts energy so sandy energy llc came up a little higher and roberts had no fixed price just and said just instead it's a, a marking above whatever the gas price out in so the only fixed price bid is from burke yes everybody else was on market price with uh with well, Sandy was profit. fixed too, but it was just a little higher. It says no fixed price bid all through Sandy. Mm. Oh, yeah, look at that. No bid, no fixed price, Sandy. Yeah. So Blanford. Oh, yeah, that's right, because they didn't want, for some reason, there were some towns that they didn't want to travel to. Is this a one year price or is this a three year? One year. Yeah, we do it every year. So so, so you that's, need a motion from us? So what I need is a motion, if you'll accept this, to make me the authorized signatory so I can sign the DocuSign when it becomes available. And okay. I don't have to bother you guys to come in. And the DocuSign is to select Bert or is it to select the others? It's, well, I have to write down who we pick. Okay. Um, so in your motion, if you can accept Dennis Burt as the winning bid here and then also authorize me as the... Well, you can choose any one of the three, is what you're saying. You, you can, okay. pretty much. But Dennis Burke is the preferred mm -hmm. at yeah. this point. Or the, I don't know, the most feasible, even though it's going up. <laughs> Did you calculate what those prices would do to our budget? So our budget has been, since I've been here, 18000 every year since I've been here. Um, we saved a lot this year because not only did we have a lower price per gallon, but because of COVID, less traveling, right. traveling and whatnot. But uh, but even before that, you'll see what the average was for gas and diesel in FY20, and we had budgeted 18 grand. Okay. So we've been pretty. Just want to make sure we cover that calculation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so you need a motion um, to allow to appoint you to be the signer for purchasing agent, purchasing agent for the um, the authorized signatory. The motion. I don't know if you want to do two separate ones or put it into one, but we're accepting. Well, my recommendation here is that we go forward and accept Dennis Burke. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that you make me the authorized signatory. You ready, Joanne? Sort of. I'll get it off the table if I don't get the whole thing. Move here. to allow Josh <laughs> to be the signature authority on behalf of the town in selecting Dennis K. Burke as the awardee for the Burke Hog Fuel Gasoline and Heating Contract for FY22. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yeah, this doesn't cover heating oil. Yeah, this is not heating. It's uh, gas and diesel. It says heating oil. It was the, right. but ours, we didn't opt into getting prices for heating. Because we, remember, we, we decided that we were happy with Sunset. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> TJ? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, like, you know, the cemetery uses fuel, I, I fire department and all, all that. Uh, and we still don't have a, a key service so that uh, the fuel that we use is, is the highway department's paying for everything. Mm -hmm. And I still don't feel that's right. I think, you know, like, uh, you know, we use the gas for our motors and that, and Watson Park does the same. And I think we should have a, a key system so that when we do draw fuel, it goes to the right department. Because I think that. I believe that is incorporated in our new building project for when we move the fuel tanks. Yep. It's not beneficial on the crappy old setup we have right now, is my understanding. But. Yep, you're correct. And I don't know, Rainy, if you want to talk more to that. Rainy is on the line, by the way. Hey, Rainy. Hello there. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay. Well, I, I was muted. I just unmuted myself. Um, I'm sorry, Josh, you said something and I didn't hear the whole thing. Uh, TJ was just talking about when we're going to go from our current fuel arrangement set up there to something that's traceable. Yeah, that's traceable. It tracks what departments uses what and we budget accordingly. And so, Eric. Um, actually, I've given a. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I have given that a lot of thought, but. Um... You know, with the anticipated changes in the near future, uh, hopefully with uh, if the new highway building goes in, fire department would be taking over that building. Um, it would make perfect sense, one, just to get rid of those fuel tanks that are alongside that building so that they have better accessibility. But I think at that time, when you're looking at this, that would be the time to put in a system to where it can, you're going to have to do some changes, but it put in a system that's could automatically deduct or, or charge to the appropriate departments when fuel is being used. Uh, whether you, you do it by a key method or a card method, I know the town had a card method in the past. Evidently, there was problems with it. I know a lot of towns that have it with the card, it works fine. Um, towns have what they call a, a key locks, that works well. But to just start handwriting the differences between the departments right now, I think it's just gonna be more confusing. Um, I think it should be in the future to get a better idea as to what the actual usages are to what department. I think that would be the time when you're doing, if, if we're gonna move forward with the building and the changes there, you're gonna to have to do something with this, the fuel supply system anyway. And I think that would be the opportune time to, to invest in a system that's going to automate that for you, not do a whole bunch of extra handwriting, you know? So that's what Eric pretty much said. You just oh. confirmed. <laughs> Good job. Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I agree with you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have no more unfinished business? At this time, no. Do we have any new business? Mary? Um, we just wanted to let you know that the trustees and Nicole went out to the Monterey Library over the weekend and spent two hours with their director, Mark Maker. They just put on an addition and it was insightful. There's ups and downs, good, bad, and different. Yeah. It's, it's, if you are ever out that way, you should stop in. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, nice. They did a great job. Thank you. Just check it out. I know I, I've been to, I know it's been a while, but I've been to uh, um, West Hampton's gorgeous oh, yeah. library. I love that. Um, Josh, do you have more new business? I looked through the um, department expenses and that's on there. The one that stuck, I think there was a treasurer assistant. My the computer restarted and I can't get back into it. So I apologize. I can try to go in here. Treasurer, assistant treasurer collector. That one was like at 90. Oh, thank you. Oh, the treasurer's clerk? 
yeah. yeah, that's the um, that's Sue. Um, we yeah. We're aware of that. Yeah, uh, Sarah's aware of her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think there was something else that stood out to me. A couple more pages. Oh, the uh, town hall maintenance and repairs is real close. Yep. So actually, we're gonna reclass um, a Roberts. Roberts, oh my God, Sun sunset, sunset, sunset bill that was charged into there, okay, um, like two thousand dollars or so. Okay, so that'll that frees up some space, but that that's one to take a look at. Um, did you have questions on other items? Um, let me just, I don't think so. I think those were the two that stuck out to me. So we have another month left of bills the three we have to keep our eye on is old town hall expense oh yeah that was the other one thank you miscellaneous um for mowing yeah old town hall expense miscellaneous for mowing and it so joanna and i was for town hall miscellaneous town hall miscellaneous including mowing. Oh, well that's at 70 but yeah but but i mean it's up. not it's only like what just less than two grand where is it yeah it starts mowing picks up yeah mowing yeah. starts to pick up and that can eat it up fairly quickly but okay. we're very close to the end so we'll keep an eye on it joanne and i had a meeting earlier today on those particular items so okay. between now and your next two to three select board meetings we'll have we'll set up joint meeting with finance committee to prepare for any line item transfers okay, okay. and that there's there'll be extra money in um the external it because that's all that was paid for in one lump you right? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. No. What do you? Oh, not oh, no, you're, you're talking about. I'm thinking of the other IT stuff. No, you're talking of the one lump sum was for um, soft right. Oh, okay, so that remainder is still stuff we might need. Yeah, to it's, I think it's going to be up over just a couple hundred. Okay. It's just we. I, I'm. In, I'm anticipating one more bill from Thank you. our webmaster, and then there's one more bill for our IT contract. Okay. So there's, I think there's just enough to cover our bill for the IT contract, but not the webmaster. So it's going to be a couple hundred, I, okay. my, and my guess is. Okay. Um, we have, so Joanne just handed me two copies. Um, Tom, you and I can share of the May 3rd. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Um, do we want to go through this and take a look at approving it, the minutes? We can. Okay, so you've got your copy right here. Oh, you I'm, just, I'm just gonna slide yeah. that over. It's a book. Let me skim it, Tom, and then I'll pass it to you. It's a book of vision. Have we there, heard anything more on the, the Tom. dog? Oh, is there another copy? Sorry. The dog nuisance situation? I have not, no, I, I did. We got the letter drafted and the animal control officer hand delivered it. Yeah. The letter. So, the letter and collected the fine, I believe, right? Yes. Well, in the letter, we right. Yeah. Well, we haven't collected it yet, but but we the, requested yes. it. Okay. Right. I thought she said they wrote a check. Well, I haven't got That's what she told you. Yeah. They she said check. they wrote a check when she was out there. Oh, yeah. Right. I that. There you go. So I'm assuming that we're somehow in receipt of that fine in one way or another. So the rest is whether or not uh, they. I have heard nothing, no. Okay, so Yeah, so what we really need to do is make sure we schedule the 60-day uh, check-in with the ACL and the chief mm -hmm. to review if they met the six conditions. Okay. And if they haven't met the six conditions, then our then our clause of then they have to surrender the dog towards the county. Yeah. Um, Sarah's calling. She actually wanted to share a little bit of news with you guys. So you mind? Yeah. No, she not picked one hundred dollars, bought lottery tickets with town money, and we bought. <laughs> hey, Sarah. <laughs> Good. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. How are you? All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Share the news. 
Can you hear me okay? We can. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you just want to know how much can be collected? Well, the select board doesn't know what we're talking about. So if you just want to. Okay, sure. So, um, so as you know, we sent out throughout our late last days, I think, um, before we start organizing different things, but we sent out some letters, the delinquency letters, um, to 170 different parcel owners. And so far we've gotten a pretty good response. Um, we have a great tax sale attorney, her name is Iris. Um, she really is good with the people. She has been able to talk to them. She's explained to them. Um, mimics almost identically what we do in the office. Uh, sits down person to person, talks them down, but also tells them the law. Um, and so far to date, we've collected $155,000 in past delinquency taxes from the leaders. That's excellent. Uh -oh. so, yeah, so I'm very excited that the girls, you know, are friendly in the office. Um, it's been a bad Understandably, people are very, very upset. Um, we've been bombarded with questions and, and comments, but so far we've been able to show that what people have paid have been posted correctly. Um, mostly we're finding it's water leads that were put on that people were unaware of. Um, most of them, or some of them are mortgage companies that pay their taxes, but they won't pay water liens. So as we explain that to them, people are happy. We have people who haven't paid taxes since 2011 that are paying. Wow. So that was exciting too, because those are some that I thought for sure we were going to just have to, you know, foreclose on. Um, and we aren't going to have to. They've been paid in full. So, you know, we're, we're going to still see them come in. And a lot of these people, um, although they're not paid off, they've done payment plans or they're not yet because we can't do payment plans until they're in tax title mm -hmm. um but they did put up this uh, a drop down which is good and the communication with everybody's been open um i feel like it's really helped to answer a lot of questions of what's been going on any concerns people have um again i think it's good that people come in uh, that think that they maybe did or maybe that they paid and that we can prove that everything's been posted accurately. So I think it's really bringing some credibility um, to the town and it's just built every day. That's great. So we moved up from our, what was our ranks years ago? It was like we were the fourth, we had the fourth lowest tax collection rate oh, really? in the state. Was that right, Sarah? Something like that? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember, but I'm, I'm shooting it. Yeah, it, was, it was somewhere around there. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it, but if we can go, I, I told, I was telling um, Sue today, I'm like, you know, I would love, love, love to see, um, just because we have so many right now, but next year, um, if I win the bid next year, I'd love to see us at 99% collection. That, that would be a really great rating, and I, I think we can do it, honestly, I really think we can. Wow, that would be pretty awesome, Sarah. Yeah, and we'll let you know that percentage is but this year, like I said, because there's so many and we have um, state guidelines and deadlines, um, how many days we have to file with the league and courts, we can't take everybody, which I originally wanted to, and put them in tax title, which would help the collections rate. Um, but again, because we only have so much time, but there's so many, we needed to kind of break them up in a few different chunks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Mary. Go ahead. What is the total dollar amount of all the 170 parcels that were delinquent? Mary, oh, oh sorry, Mary, I don't have that on. Off, I'm, I'm not in the office, but I can probably get to that to you because um, we do have a spreadsheet of that. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Were you, uh, Mary, were you asking that question so you could go to press? Yeah. Okay. So. Sarah, that was so she could go to press that we've collected X out of Y. So, okay, perfect. So. Like I said, let me, um, when I, I'll try to jump on tonight, if not tomorrow morning, before I head out, I'll, put, I'll jump on and see what the original amount was. That okay. We're trying to collect. Thank you, Sarah. Thank That's you, Sarah. Great. Have a good night. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, you too, guys. Bye. 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 Um, okay, I would make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 3rd as written. Do you have to amend it? 
Because you already you already tabled it, so does it have to be amended motion or? No. Uh, no, that's a good question. Okay. We can, um, we can bring it back off the table. Motion is there a second? Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is the warrant that we just need to reprint. All any right. New business? Do we have any other new business? Nope. Oh, yes. What do we have? Okay. So I would like Josh. Josh Tell me. To get a bid. Okay. To solve this water problem that we have on the whatever side of that, the, the south side of the building. Are you talking about the trench that goes from Doug's yard into our property? Not the trench. I just, I was, when I was meeting here the other night, there's so much standing water back there. Because the water can't get to the drains. We have two drains back there that are high and dry. So that was the problem that Josh and I met with um, a landscape architect last year. Drainage all around the building is bad, but that particular spot was the one that was brought to our attention the other day. Yeah. Yep. So, so uh, he was he providing, remind me, was he providing us a plan? I know he provided us a plan for the parking lot. Um, through that, but we don't. We have to revisit it. We didn't get approved for the grant that was going to give us a plan for the rest of the drainage situation. The problem is it runs. We have that runoff down from the park because it's all downhill, and then it just sits here. Yes, and and what I was looking at is because we have the we have the ditch over on the parking lot side, but mm -hmm. the ditch is lower than a drain, and then this flat up here is just low enough that it doesn't get over the lip of the drain. And, the drain out here, there's a drop and there's a drop inlet over here that's higher. That's high, right? Because the water just has no path to get there. So I thought if we spend a time of doing some good, I'm going to say grading back there, of making a small, shallow oh, ditch that actually does that. Hours of the road oh, yeah, good. but I just thought that could, that and looking at those two uh, drains that are there, because you know, over time, drains are installed, but the ground settles. So do we just need to have someone come in and chop saw it off six inches, put the grate back down, and now the water can drain to it? Because once water starts draining, it's hydraulic. It sucks water with it. Right? It might be cheaper to put a little soil on there and bring it to us there. Right. So I think we should revisit, um, maybe if we have a conversation with that gentleman again, um, mm -hmm. see if he, I don't think he drew anything up for us, but maybe um, we could ask him to put together a scoping sequence for us as far as like we can get It would be something yeah. that would be nice to take care of either during the summer or during the spring. Yeah, I know. It's, it's and, really soggy over it'll there. It'll probably take you maybe twenty thousand dollars worth of dirt work, or no more than that. Yeah. Do you think that okay. putting some dirt will help? Mm -hmm. Putting some material would help. I think adding material there will oh. back it up into Dougie's yard. Who's ever got that flat spot back there? I mean, if you put dirt between us and them, it's going to put the water on that side because the water doesn't work. It's just smooth. It's like a little swamp, right? So. Why not look at the feasibility of putting a drop inlet in the middle of that pond? Yeah, bring it one across and dropping one out there right outside the right outside the uh the door, right outside about that area, right? The door of the the dirt of the gymnasium extending that drain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's see what this guy has to say because he took a close look at it and he had some ideas. Um and then I think that's a good idea. We can move forward and get some prices. Yeah, I, just, I want that stone wall done. What are we waiting for? Yeah, stone wall. It's coming. What? Oh, speaking of that wall, though, by the way, there are two trees. You're talking about the one off yeah. the next to it. Uh -huh. Stone wall. One you know the trees down. I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. On the park side. Huh? That they're ash trees, apparently. Okay. You they, cut down? Yeah, we got to. Well, so what's her name brought to my attention? The, the lady that lives there. Oh, Pat. Uh, Miss, yeah, Miss Hebert. Um, and I did consult with the historical commission, who then went and looked looked at it themselves and did agree that those trees How about the come tree warden? Did he say it's He did. Yeah. So after the historical commission looked at it, at that point, I spoke with uh, Boomsman. He went over to look at it. Okay. 
And uh, everyone seems to be in agreement that we got to take those two trees down. Okay. Okay. Motion, motion to tell <laughs> the tree warden to take the two trees down. It's going to be anywhere between two and four thousand dollars. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, trees are crazy hard. expensive to get cut, cut down. And, and and because of the way it's positioned and, yeah. you know, it's up against the barn yeah. and it's over Hebert's property, it's it's hey, it's in an awkward property. position. Any discussion? You ask, uh, why don't we ask Pat to remove that and then we won't have to have her. <laughs> no, 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 Pat's, Pat's, no. Pat's <laughs> done her job. She did her tree. Now we need to get the wall. Any day now, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. It. Yeah, it's coming. Um, yeah, no, all in favor. Move forward with take, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, ask him to get those trees. If he's got, does he have budget? Ooh, let's look and see if the tree so, works. Well, that's a, that's it's a Watson in, Park. It's in Watson Park. We he's have budget from Watson Park. I mean, you know, the tree warden. I can, yeah, but we can we'll take Watson Park. We'll funding. figure it out. Hmm? We can use Watson Park. Funding. I don't know that you have that much money in Watson Park. Oh, oh yeah, we do. Okay, the yeah, average we'll have it. But we'll figure it out. One way or another, we'll get put Dougie in charge of it. We'll get it out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Absolutely. I was supposed Dougie's to be there. Dougie's not allowed to use chainsaws. Right. Dougie me. can't use power tools. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would say let's adjourn at 7 13. Uh, do we have an executive session? Yeah. Yes. We right. should. Uh, we should have executive session with the intent to reconvene. Why is that? Why do we want to do that? Because we're nice people. Um, okay, so uh, motion to go into executive session uh, to discuss collective bargaining or litigation uh, in an open meeting. Um, no, not in an open meeting. <laughs> Sorry, I started um, reading. Uh, with respect to collective bargaining and litigation. Um, is there a second Do we have an to reconvene? To... Yeah. Uh, with intent to reconvene. I said that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Roll call vote. Care says yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's like we play this game in the car when you go into another town and you see the town sign. You have to shout the name of the town. And the last person to shout it loses. So we'll scream it and Violet would just go, so down, because she can't read it quite yet, but she knows there's a sign there. Uh, it's okay that that wasn't on the agenda. Yeah, that's okay. okay. What wasn't on the agenda? It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. It's okay. Oh, I thought you meant the. Did you adjourn already? What's wrong with you? Yep. You got it right there. It's number 10 on the agenda. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are uh, just made a motion to come out of executive session and reconvene into open meeting. Um, and it was voted and approved on by the board. So we're being recorded again. Um, so I would make uh, a motion to allow or to allow Josh to negotiate a contract or is it an actual appointment? Um, we would uh, allow Josh to extend the offer. Um, with David Waldron for uh, the position of highway superintendent. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, do we have anything else? Mm, that was it. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's it. TJ's here. Meeting's over. Oh, second half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will go ahead and adjourn then at uh, 7.50. That watches that clock. Yeah. All right.